language learning. I want to talk about learning languages. I've lived in many different countries, both in Western Europe, the Middle East, and now here in New York. During that time, I've learned five or six different languages to some extent. I absolutely love learning languages. Not only are they important when you move to a country, I just find them fascinating. Before coming to New York, I lived in Barcelona, Spain for 10 years. When I first arrived, the most important thing for me was being able to communicate with the locals. I didn't attend classes because I don't think that I do well in a classroom. Instead, I prefer to learn by having conversations, figuring out what I need to say, using dictionaries, and listening carefully. Other things that helped me when I moved to Spain were watching typical programs we see on TV worldwide, like the weather forecast, and it was great because they repeated the same phrases, so I quickly learned the vocabulary. The pictures also helped a lot. Game shows were also helpful for me to learn Spanish quickly. They often have catchphrases or slogans that contestants and hosts say repeatedly, which was a good learning opportunity. I also used to read Spanish newspapers. First of all, I just accepted there was no way I was going to understand anything but one or two words. However, over time, I realized I was learning a great deal. I wanted to know what was happening in the country where I lived, and it helped me learn the language too. Sometimes I carried a dictionary, or if I didn't know a word, I would ask others for its meaning. However, the best practice for me was simply talking to people on the street or in shops. I would think about what I wanted to say beforehand, even though I often stumbled with my words at first. Once you get past the initial embarrassment, it becomes quite funny. Most people are understanding and supportive. It took me a long time to become fluent in Spanish. I lived there for 10 years and now I feel very comfortable with the language. But during the first two years, having a meaningful conversation was challenging. I often struggled to understand many words and phrases, especially colloquial expressions and idioms that people use in everyday talk, but you don't necessarily see written down. Learning those was not easy, but it was a fun journey and people are really supportive when they see your genuine interest in learning their language. I want to talk about learning languages. I've lived in many different countries, both in Western Europe, the Middle East, and now here in New York. During that time, I've learned five or six different languages to some extent. I absolutely love learning languages. Not only are they important when you move to a country, I just find them fascinating. Before coming to New York, I lived in Barcelona, Spain for 10 years. When I first arrived, the most important thing for me was being able to communicate with the locals. I didn't attend classes because I don't think that I do well in a classroom. Instead, I prefer to learn by having conversations, figuring out what I need to say, using dictionaries, and listening carefully. Other things that helped me when I moved to Spain were watching typical programs we see on TV worldwide, like the weather forecast, and it was great because they repeated the same phrases, so I quickly learned the vocabulary. The pictures also helped a lot. Game shows were also helpful for me to learn Spanish quickly. 
They often have catchphrases or slogans that contestants and hosts say repeatedly, which was a good learning opportunity. I also used to read Spanish newspapers. First of all, I just accepted there was no way I was going to understand anything but one or two words. However, over time, I realized I was learning a great deal. I wanted to know what was happening in the country where I lived, and it helped me learn the language too. Sometimes I carried a dictionary, or if I didn't know a word, I would ask others for its meaning. However, the best practice for me was simply talking to people on the street or in shops. I would think about what I wanted to say beforehand, even though I often stumbled with my words at first. Once you get past the initial embarrassment, it becomes quite funny. Most people are understanding and supportive. It took me a long time to become fluent in Spanish. I lived there for 10 years and now I feel very comfortable with the language. But during the first two years, having a meaningful conversation was challenging. I often struggled to understand many words and phrases, especially colloquial expressions and idioms that people use in everyday talk, but you don't necessarily see written down. Learning those was not easy, but it was a fun journey and people are really supportive when they see your genuine interest in learning their language. I want to talk about learning languages. I want to talk about learning languages. Quiero hablar del aprendizaje de idiomas. I want to talk about learning languages. I've lived in many different countries, both in Western Europe, the Middle East, and now here in New York. I've lived in many different countries, both in Western Europe, the Middle East, and now here in New York. He vivido en muchos países diferentes, tanto en Europa Occidental como en Oriente Medio, y ahora aquí, en Nueva York. I've lived in many different countries, both in Western Europe, the Middle East, and now here in New York. During that time, I've learned five or six different languages to some extent. During that time, I've learned five or six different languages to some extent. Durante ese tiempo, he aprendido hasta cierto punto cinco o seis idiomas diferentes. During that time, I've learned five or six different languages to some extent. I absolutely love learning languages. I absolutely love learning languages. Me encanta aprender idiomas. I absolutely love learning languages. Not only are they important when you move to a country, I just find them fascinating. Not only are they important when you move to a country, I just find them fascinating. No solo son importantes cuando te trasladas a otro país, sino que me parecen fascinantes. Not only are they important when you move to a country, I just find them fascinating. Before coming to New York, I lived in Barcelona, Spain for 10 years. Before coming to New York, I lived in Barcelona, Spain for 10 years. Antes de venir a Nueva York, viví en Barcelona, España, durante 10 años. Before coming to New York, I lived in Barcelona, Spain for 10 years. When I first arrived, the most important thing for me was being able to communicate with the locals. When I first arrived, the most important thing for me was being able to communicate with the locals. Cuando llegué por primera vez, lo más importante para mí era poder comunicarme con los nativos. When I first arrived, the most important thing for me was being able to communicate with the locals. 
I didn't attend classes because I don't think that I do well in a classroom. I didn't attend classes because I don't think I do well in a classroom. No fui a clases porque creo que no se me da bien aprender en un aula. I didn't attend classes because I don't think I do well in a classroom. Instead, I prefer to learn by having conversations, figuring out what I need to say, using dictionaries, and listening carefully. Instead, I prefer to learn by having conversations, figuring out what I need to say, using dictionaries, and listening carefully. En su lugar, prefiero aprender conversando, pensando lo que necesito decir, usando diccionarios y escuchando atentamente. Instead, I prefer to learn by having conversations, figuring out what I need to say, using dictionaries, and listening carefully. Other things that helped me when I moved to Spain were watching typical programs we see on TV worldwide, like the weather forecast. Other things that helped me when I moved to Spain were watching typical programs we see on TV worldwide, like the weather forecast. Otra cosa que me ayudó cuando me mudé a España fue ver los programas típicos que vemos en la televisión en todo el mundo, como la previsión del tiempo. Other things that helped me when I moved to Spain were watching typical programs we see on TV worldwide, like the weather forecast. And it was great because they repeated the same phrases, so I quickly learned the vocabulary. It was great because they repeated the same phrases, so I quickly learned the vocabulary. Era genial porque repetían las mismas frases. Así que aprendí rápidamente el vocabulario. It was great because they repeated the same phrases, so I quickly learned the vocabulary. The pictures also helped a lot. The pictures also helped a lot. Las imágenes también me ayudaron mucho. The pictures also helped a lot. Game shows were also helpful for me to learn Spanish quickly. Game shows were also helpful for me to learn Spanish quickly. Los programas de concursos también me fueron de mucha ayuda para aprender español rápidamente. Game shows were also helpful for me to learn Spanish quickly. They often have catchphrases or slogans that contestants and hosts say repeatedly, which was a good learning opportunity. They often have catchphrases or slogans that contestants and hosts say repeatedly, which was a good learning opportunity. Suelen tener frases hechas o eslóganes que los concursantes y presentadores dicen repetidamente, lo que era una buena oportunidad para aprender. They often have catchphrases or slogans that contestants and hosts say repeatedly, which was a good learning opportunity. I also used to read Spanish newspapers. I also used to read Spanish newspapers. También solía leer periódicos españoles. I also used to read Spanish newspapers. First of all, I just accepted there was no way I was going to understand anything but one or two words. First of all, I just accepted there was no way I was going to understand anything but one or two words. En primer lugar, simplemente acepté que no había forma de que entendiera nada más que una o dos palabras. First of all, I just accepted there was no way I was going to understand anything but one or two words. However, over time, I realized I was learning a great deal. However, over time, I realized I was learning a great deal. Sin embargo, con el tiempo, me di cuenta de que estaba aprendiendo mucho. However, over time, I realized I was learning a great deal. 
I wanted to know what was happening in the country where I lived, and it helped me learn the language too. I wanted to know what was happening in the country where I lived, and it helped me learn the language too. Quería saber lo que estaba pasando en el país donde vivía, y eso también me ayudaba a aprender el idioma. I wanted to know what was happening in the country where I lived, and it helped me learn the language too. Sometimes I carried a dictionary, or if I didn't know a word, I would ask others for its meaning. Sometimes I carried a dictionary, or if I didn't know a word, I would ask others for its meaning. A veces llevaba un diccionario, si no conocía una palabra, le preguntaba a los demás su significado. Sometimes, I carried a dictionary, or if I didn't know a word, I would ask others for its meaning. However, the best practice for me was simply talking to people on the street or in shop. However, the best practice for me was simply talking to people on the street or in shops. Sin embargo, la mejor práctica para mí era simplemente hablar con la gente por la calle o en las tiendas. However, the best practice for me was simply talking to people on the street or in shops. I would think about what I wanted to say beforehand, even though I often stumbled with my words at first. I would think about what I wanted to say beforehand, even though I often stumbled with my words at first. Pensaba lo que quería decir de antemano, aunque a menudo me tropezaba con las palabras al principio. I would think about what I wanted to say beforehand, even though I often stumbled with my words at first. Once you get past the initial embarrassment, it becomes quite funny. Once you get past the initial embarrassment, it becomes quite funny. Una vez superas la vergüenza inicial, se vuelve bastante divertido. Once you get past the initial embarrassment, it becomes quite funny. Most people are understanding and supportive. Most people are understanding and supportive. La mayoría de la gente es comprensiva y me apoya. Most people are understanding and supportive. It took me a long time to become fluent in Spanish. It took me a long time to become fluent in Spanish. Me tomó mucho tiempo hablar con fluidez el español. It took me a long time to become fluent in Spanish. I lived there for 10 years and now I feel very comfortable with the language. I lived there for 10 years and now I feel very comfortable with the language. Viví allí 10 años y ahora me siento muy cómoda con el idioma. I lived there for 10 years, and now I feel very comfortable with the language. But during the first two years, having a meaningful conversation was challenging. But during the first two years, having a meaningful conversation was challenging. Pero durante los dos primeros años, Mantener una conversación significativa era todo un reto. But during the first two years, having a meaningful conversation was challenging. I often struggled to understand many words and phrases. I often struggled to understand many words and phrases. A menudo me costaba entender muchas palabras y frases. I often struggle to understand many words and phrases. Especially colloquial expressions and idioms that people use in everyday talk, but you don't necessarily see written down. Especially colloquial expressions and idioms that people use in everyday talk, but you don't necessarily see written down. Especialmente expresiones coloquiales y modismos que la gente utiliza en el día a día, pero que no necesariamente se ven por escrito. 
especially colloquial expressions and idioms that people use in everyday talk, but you don't necessarily see written down. Learning those was not easy. Learning those was not easy. Aprenderlos no fue fácil. Learning those was not easy. But it was a fun journey, and people are really supportive when they see your genuine interest in learning their language. But it was a fun journey, and people are really supportive when they see your genuine interest in learning their language. Pero fue un viaje divertido, y la gente te apoya mucho cuando ve que tienes verdadero interés en aprender su lengua. But it was a fun journey, and people are really supportive when they see your genuine interest in learning their language. I want to talk about learning languages. I've lived in many different countries, both in Western Europe, the Middle East, and now here in New York. During that time, I've learned five or six different languages to some extent. I absolutely love learning languages. Not only are they important when you move to a country, I just find them fascinating. Before coming to New York, I lived in Barcelona, Spain for 10 years. When I first arrived, the most important thing for me was being able to communicate with the locals. I didn't attend classes because I don't think that I do well in a classroom. Instead, I prefer to learn by having conversations, figuring out what I need to say, using dictionaries, and listening carefully. Other things that helped me when I moved to Spain were watching typical programs we see on TV worldwide, like the weather forecast, and it was great because they repeated the same phrases, so I quickly learned the vocabulary. The pictures also helped a lot. Game shows were also helpful for me to learn Spanish quickly. They often have catchphrases or slogans that contestants and hosts say repeatedly, which was a good learning opportunity. I also used to read Spanish newspapers. First of all, I just accepted there was no way I was going to understand anything but one or two words. However, over time, I realized I was learning a great deal. I wanted to know what was happening in the country where I lived, and it helped me learn the language too. Sometimes I carried a dictionary, or if I didn't know a word, I would ask others for its meaning. However, the best practice for me was simply talking to people on the street or in shops. I would think about what I wanted to say beforehand, even though I often stumbled with my words at first. Once you get past the initial embarrassment, it becomes quite funny. Most people are understanding and supportive. It took me a long time to become fluent in Spanish. I lived there for 10 years and now I feel very comfortable with the language. But during the first two years, having a meaningful conversation was challenging. I often struggled to understand many words and phrases, especially colloquial expressions and idioms that people use in everyday talk, but you don't necessarily see written down. Learning those was not easy, but it was a fun journey, and people are really supportive when they see your genuine interest in learning their language. Managing stress. I want to talk about managing stress today. You know, life here in New York can be really stressful. So I think today's topic is very helpful for everyone because we can take action to deal with it and handle the stress. Maybe you've made some changes in your life, both big and small, but instead of being scared, I believe you should have a positive attitude and see change as a normal part of life. 
And maybe here in New York, families live in small homes. So sometimes you might argue with your family. Resolving disagreements with people is crucial. It helps build strong relationships and honor the commitments you've made. For instance, when you feel lonely and seek comfort, it's important to reach out to trusted people. Having a group of friends who can listen to you allows you to release some stress through conversations. You know, I've found something funny. If you want to reduce stress, you can break it down using the word S-T-R-E-S-S. Let's start with the letter S. Well, S stands for scheduling. You don't have to pack your day with too many things. If you feel too busy, you can cut out an activity or two. Now let's talk about the letter T. The T word is treat your body well. Experts say that exercise can reduce stress. Also, nourishing your brain and body with healthy food is important. Moving on to the letter R. R is all about relaxation. Engage in activities that you enjoy that help you relax. It could be reading a good book, picking up a new hobby, spending time with your pet, or even visiting a spa. Personally, I find playing the piano and watching funny movies really helpful when I'm stressed. Next, we have the letter E. It represents expectations. Being realistic about yourself and others is essential. Do your best and don't strive for perfection. Don't expect others to be perfect either. This mindset can reduce a lot of stress for you and those around you. The letter S appears again, and this time it's about sleep. I really, really love to sleep, to be honest. It's like a hobby for me because a good night's sleep keeps your mind and body in shape. Experts suggest that sleeping more than seven hours can actually help you feel tired. So don't oversleep during the day. Just sleep enough when you feel rested. Lastly, the letter S comes back once more. It stands for smile. When you smile and have confidence, your attitude and thoughts shape how you perceive things. Even if you tend to be negative, you can learn to think more positively, which makes coping with stress more comfortable. Finally, I believe we should all take action and apply these tips to our lives so that everyone can be stressed. I want to talk about managing stress today. You know, life here in New York can be really stressful. So I think today's topic is very helpful for everyone because we can take action to deal with it and handle the stress. Maybe you've made some changes in your life, both big and small, but instead of being scared, I believe you should have a positive attitude and see change as a normal part of life. And maybe here in New York, families live in small homes, so sometimes you might argue with your family. Resolving disagreements with people is crucial. It helps build strong relationships and honor the commitments you've made. For instance, when you feel lonely and seek comfort, it's important to reach out to trusted people. Having a group of friends who can listen to you allows you to release some stress through conversations. You know, I've found something funny. If you want to reduce stress, you can break it down using the word S-T-R-E-S-S. Let's start with the letter S. Well, S stands for scheduling. You don't have to pack your day with too many things. If you feel too busy, you can cut out an activity or two. Now let's talk about the letter T. The T word is treat your body well. 
experts say that exercise can reduce stress. Also, nourishing your brain and body with healthy food is important. Moving on to the letter R. R is all about relaxation. Engage in activities that you enjoy that help you relax. It could be reading a good book, picking up a new hobby, spending time with your pet, or even visiting a spa. Personally, I find playing the piano and watching funny movies really helpful when I'm stressed. Next, we have the letter E. It represents expectations. Being realistic about yourself and others is essential. Do your best and don't strive for perfection. Don't expect others to be perfect either. This mindset can reduce a lot of stress for you and those around you. The letter S appears again, and this time it's about sleep. I really, really love to sleep, to be honest. It's like a hobby for me because a good night's sleep keeps your mind and body in shape. Experts suggest that sleeping more than seven hours can actually help you feel tired. So don't oversleep during the day. Just sleep enough when you feel rested. Lastly, the letter S comes back once more. It stands for smile. When you smile and have confidence, your attitude and thoughts shape how you perceive things. Even if you tend to be negative, you can learn to think more positively, which makes coping with stress more comfortable. Finally, I believe we should all take action and apply these tips to our lives so that everyone can be stressed. I want to talk about managing stress today. I want to talk about managing stress today. Hoy quiero hablar sobre cómo controlar el estrés. I want to talk about managing stress today. You know, life here in New York can be really stressful. You know, life here in New York can be really stressful. Ya sabes, la vida aquí en Nueva York puede ser muy estresante. You know, life here in New York can be really stressful. So, I think today's topic is very helpful for everyone because we can take action to deal with it and handle the stress. So, I think today's topic is very helpful for everyone because we can take action to deal with it and handle the stress. Por eso creo que el tema de hoy es muy útil para todos, porque podemos tomar medidas para afrontarlo y manejar el estrés. So I think today's topic is very helpful for everyone because we can take action to deal with it and handle the stress. Maybe you've made some changes in your life, both big and small. Maybe you've made some changes in your life, both big and small. Quizá hayas hecho algunos cambios en tu vida, tanto grandes como pequeños. Maybe you've made some changes in your life, both big and small. But instead of being scared, I believe you should have a positive attitude and see change as a normal part of life. But instead of being scared, I believe you should have a positive attitude and see change as a normal part of life. Pero en lugar de estar asustado, creo que deberías tener una actitud positiva y ver el cambio como una parte normal de la vida. But instead of being scared, I believe you should have a positive attitude and see change as a normal part of life. And maybe here in New York, families live in small homes. And maybe here in New York, families live in small homes. Y puede que aquí, en Nueva York, las familias vivan en casas pequeñas. And maybe here in New York, families live in small homes. So sometimes you might argue with your family. So sometimes you might argue with your family. Así que, a veces, 
puedes discutir con tu familia. So sometimes, you might argue with your family. Resolving disagreements with people is crucial. Resolving disagreements with people is crucial. Resolver los desacuerdos con la gente es crucial. Resolving disagreements with people is crucial. It helps build strong relationships and honor the commitments you've made. It helps build strong relationships and honor the commitments you've made. Ayuda a construir relaciones fuertes y a cumplir los compromisos que has hecho. It helps build strong relationships and honor the commitments you've made. For instance, when you feel lonely and seek comfort, it's important to reach out to trusted people. For instance, when you feel lonely and seek comfort, it's important to reach out to trusted people. Por ejemplo, cuando te sientes solo y buscas consuelo, es importante acudir a personas de confianza. For instance, when you feel lonely and seek comfort, it's important to reach out to trusted people. Having a group of friends who can listen to you allows you to release some stress through conversations. Having a group of friends who can listen to you allows you to release some stress through conversations. Tener un grupo de amigos que puedan escucharte te permite liberar algo de estrés a través de conversaciones. Having a group of friends who can listen to you allows you to release some stress through conversations. You know, I've found something funny. You know, I've found something funny. Sabes, he descubierto algo curioso. You know, I've found something funny. If you want to reduce stress, you can break it down using the word S-T-R-E-S-S. -S -S. If you want to reduce stress, you can break it down using the word S-T-R-E-S-S. -S -S. Si quieres reducir el estrés, puedes descomponerlo utilizando la palabra S-T-R-E-S-S. -S -S. If you want to reduce stress, you can break it down using the word S-T-R-E-S-S. -S -S. Let's start with the letter S. Let's start with the letter S. Empecemos con la letra S. Let's start with the letter S. Well, S stands for scheduling. Well, S stands for scheduling. Bueno, S significa planificación. Well, S stands for scheduling. You don't have to pack your day with too many things. You don't have to pack your day with too many things. No tienes que llenar tu día con demasiadas cosas. You don't have to pack your day with too many things. If you feel too busy, you can cut out an activity or two. If you feel too busy, you can cut out an activity or two. Si te sientes demasiado ocupado, puedes suprimir una o dos actividades. If you feel too busy, you can cut out an activity or two. Now let's talk about the letter T. Now, let's talk about the letter T. Ahora hablemos de la letra T. Now, let's talk about the letter T. The T word is treat your body well. The T word is treat your body well. La palabra T es trata bien a tu cuerpo. The T word is treat your body well. Experts say that exercise can reduce stress. Experts say that exercise can reduce stress. Los expertos dicen que el ejercicio puede reducir el estrés. Experts say that exercise can reduce stress. 
Also, nourishing your brain and body with healthy food is important. Also, nourishing your brain and body with healthy food is important. También, es importante nutrir el cerebro y el cuerpo con alimentos sanos. Also, nourishing your brain and body with healthy food is important. Moving on to the letter R. Moving on to the letter R. Pasamos a la letra R. Moving on to the letter R. R is all about relaxation. R is all about relaxation. La R se refiere a la relajación. R is all about relaxation. Engage in activities that you enjoy that help you relax. Engage in activities that you enjoy and that help you relax. Realiza actividades que te gusten y te ayuden a relajarte. Engage in activities that you enjoy and that help you relax. It could be reading a good book, picking up a new hobby, spending time with your pet, or even visiting a spa. It could be reading a good book, picking up a new hobby, spending time with your pet, or even visiting a spa. Puede ser leer un buen libro, empezar un nuevo hobby, pasar tiempo con tu mascota o incluso ir a un spa. It could be reading a good book, picking up a new hobby, spending time with your pet, or even visiting a spa. Personally, I find playing the piano and watching funny movies really helpful when I'm stressed. Personally, I find playing the piano and watching funny movies really helpful when I'm stressed. Personalmente, encuentro muy útil tocar el piano y ver películas divertidas cuando estoy estresado. Personally, I find playing the piano and watching funny movies really helpful when I'm stressed. Next, we have the letter E. Next, we have the letter E. A continuación tenemos la letra E. Next, we have the letter E. It represents expectations. It represents expectations. Representa las expectativas. It represents expectations. Being realistic about yourself and others is essential. Being realistic about yourself and others is essential. Ser realista contigo mismo y con los demás es esencial. Being realistic about yourself and others is essential. Do your best and don't strive for perfection. Do your best and don't strive for perfection. Hazlo lo mejor que puedas y no busques la perfección. Do your best and don't strive for perfection. Don't expect others to be perfect either. Don't expect others to be perfect either. Tampoco esperes que los demás sean perfectos. Don't expect others to be perfect either. This mindset can reduce a lot of stress for you and those around you. This mindset can reduce a lot of stress for you and those around you. Esta mentalidad puede reducir mucho estrés para ti y para los que te rodean. This mindset can reduce a lot of stress for you and those around you. The letter S appears again, and this time it's about sleep. The letter S appears again, and this time it's about sleep. La letra S aparece de nuevo, y esta vez se trata del sueño. The letter S appears again, and this time, it's about sleep. I really, really love to sleep, to be honest. I really, really love to sleep, to be honest. 
la verdad es que me encanta dormir. I really, really love to sleep, to be honest. It's like a hobby for me because a good night's sleep keeps your mind and body in shape. It's like a hobby for me because a good night's sleep keeps your mind and body in shape. Es como un hobby para mí porque una buena noche de sueño mantiene la mente y el cuerpo en forma. It's like a hobby for me because a good night's sleep keeps your mind and body in shape. Experts suggest that sleeping more than seven hours can actually help you feel tired. Experts suggest that sleeping more than seven hours can actually make you feel tired. Los expertos sugieren que dormir más de siete horas puede hacerte sentir cansado. Experts suggest that sleeping more than seven hours can actually make you feel tired. So don't oversleep during the day. Just sleep enough when you feel rested. So don't oversleep during the day. Just sleep enough when you feel rested. Así que no duermas más de la cuenta durante el día. Solo duerme lo suficiente cuando te sientas descansado. So, don't oversleep during the day. Just sleep enough when you feel rested. Lastly, the letter S comes back once more. Lastly, the letter S comes back once more. Por último, la letra S vuelve una vez más. Lastly, the letter S comes back once more. It stands for smile. It stands for smile. Significa sonrisa. It stands for smile. When you smile and have confidence, your attitude and thoughts shape how you perceive things. When you smile and have confidence, your attitude and thoughts shape how you perceive things. Cuando sonríes y tienes confianza, tu actitud y tus pensamientos determinan cómo percibes las cosas. When you smile and have confidence, your attitude and thoughts shape how you perceive things. Even if you tend to be negative, you can learn to think more positively, which makes coping with stress more comfortable. Even if you tend to be negative, you can learn to think more positively, which makes coping with stress more comfortable. Incluso si tiendes a ser negativo, puedes aprender a pensar de forma más positiva, lo que hace que afrontar el estrés sea más confortable. Even if you tend to be negative, you can learn to think more positively, which makes coping with stress more comfortable. Finally, I believe we should all take action and apply these tips to our lives so that everyone can beat stress. Finally, I believe we should all take action and apply these tips to our lives so that everyone can beat stress. Por último, Creo que todos deberíamos actuar y aplicar estos consejos a nuestras vidas para que todo el mundo pueda vencer el estrés. Finally, I believe we should all take action and apply these tips to our lives so that everyone can beat stress. I want to talk about managing stress today. You know, life here in New York can be really stressful. So I think today's topic is very helpful for everyone because we can take action to deal with it and handle the stress. Maybe you've made some changes in your life, both big and small, but instead of being scared, I believe you should have a positive attitude and see change as a normal part of life. And maybe here in New York, families live in small homes, so sometimes you might argue with your family. Resolving disagreements with people is crucial. It helps build strong relationships and honor the commitments you've made. For instance, when you feel lonely and seek comfort, 
it's important to reach out to trusted people. Having a group of friends who can listen to you allows you to release some stress through conversations. You know, I've found something funny. If you want to reduce stress, you can break it down using the word S-T-R-E-S-S. Let's start with the letter S. Well, S stands for scheduling. You don't have to pack your day with too many things. If you feel too busy, you can cut out an activity or two. Now let's talk about the letter T. The T word is treat your body well. Experts say that exercise can reduce stress. Also, nourishing your brain and body with healthy food is important. Moving on to the letter R. R is all about relaxation. Engage in activities that you enjoy that help you relax. It could be reading a good book, picking up a new hobby, spending time with your pet, or even visiting a spa. Personally, I find playing the piano and watching funny movies really helpful when I'm stressed. Next, we have the letter E. It represents expectations. Being realistic about yourself and others is essential. Do your best and don't strive for perfection. Don't expect others to be perfect either. This mindset can reduce a lot of stress for you and those around you. The letter S appears again, and this time it's about sleep. I really, really love to sleep to be honest. It's like a hobby for me because a good night's sleep keeps your mind and body in shape. Experts suggest that sleeping more than seven hours can actually help you feel tired. So don't oversleep during the day. Just sleep enough when you feel rested. Lastly, the letter S comes back once more. It stands for smile. When you smile and have confidence, your attitude and thoughts shape how you perceive things. Even if you tend to be negative, you can learn to think more positively, which makes coping with stress more comfortable. Finally, I believe we should all take action and apply these tips to our lives so that everyone can beat stress. Cultural Differences I always believed that good manners were good manners wherever you were in the world. But that was until I met my boyfriend, Jason, who is from Burma, also known as Myanmar. We met in New York when we were both students in college. When we first got to know each other, we were always surrounded by a group of friends. I liked Jason because he was funny and kind, and I could tell he liked me, but we never spent any time alone. The first time I suggested that we hang out without our friends, he said no without an explanation. <laughs> Honestly, I thought it was kind of rude, and my feelings were really hurt, so I didn't talk to him as much. Then the next time I saw Jason in our big group, he was just as friendly and happy as usual. I was confused. Finally, I asked him why he couldn't hang out with me. He apologized, and then he told me that in Burma, it's custom to date in a group situation. Since he had only been in the U.S. for a few years, he was still having trouble navigating the two cultures that he lived in. One culture was the more reserved Burmese culture, while the other was the more open American culture. A few months later, after we started dating, I asked him why he never responded to my cute, romantic Facebook posts with more than cool or thanks. 
it seemed weird to me that his responses weren't romantic. And honestly, I was a little jealous of the sweet posts my American friends, boyfriends left on their Facebook pages. But Jason told me in Burma, it's considered bragging to express your feelings in public, especially on a social networking site. He didn't want his family and friends to think he was bragging about his American girlfriend. From an American point of view, I thought he was being a bit cold. However, from a Burmese point of view, he was actually being respectful. As confused as I was about what's considered good and bad manners in Jason's culture, he felt the same way about American culture. He thought it was bad manners to refer to have a best friend, and he would argue with me whenever I called my friend Rachel my best friend. Jason said that there is no such thing as a best friend in Burmese culture. There are only close friends. It would be inconsiderate to name one person as a best friend because your other friends would feel offended. Anyways, we've been together for two years and we still have disagreements, but we've learned that as long as we're a couple, we'll never completely agree about whether our manners are good or bad. I always believed that good manners were good manners wherever you were in the world. But that was until I met my boyfriend, Jason, who is from Burma, also known as Myanmar. We met in New York when we were both students in college. When we first got to know each other, we were always surrounded by a group of friends. I liked Jason because he was funny and kind, and I could tell he liked me, but we never spent any time alone. The first time I suggested that we hang out without our friends, he said no without an explanation. <laughs> Honestly, I thought it was kind of rude and my feelings were really hurt, so I didn't talk to him as much. Then the next time I saw Jason in our big group, he was just as friendly and happy as usual. I was confused. Finally, I asked him why he couldn't hang out with me. He apologized and then he told me that in Burma, it's custom to date in a group situation. Since he had only been in the US for a few years, he was still having trouble navigating the two cultures that he lived in. One culture was the more reserved Burmese culture while the other was the more open American culture. A few months later, after we started dating, I asked him why he never responded to my cute, romantic Facebook posts with more than cool or thanks. It seemed weird to me that his responses weren't romantic. And honestly, I was a little jealous of the sweet posts my American friends, boyfriends left on their Facebook pages. But Jason told me in Burma, it's considered bragging to express your feelings in public, especially on a social networking site. He didn't want his family and friends to think he was bragging about his American girlfriend. From an American point of view, I thought he was being a bit cold. However, from a Burmese point of view, he was actually being respectful. As confused as I was about what's considered good and bad manners in Jason's culture, he felt the same way about American culture. He thought it was bad manners to refer to have a best friend, and he would argue with me whenever I called my friend Rachel my best friend. Jason said that there is no such thing as a best friend in Burmese culture. There are only close friends. It would be inconsiderate to name one person as a best friend because your other friends would feel offended. Anyways, we've been together for two years and we still have disagreements, 
but we've learned that as long as we're a couple, we'll never completely agree about whether our manners are good or bad. I always believed that good manners were good manners wherever you were in the world. I always believed that good manners were good manners wherever you were in the world. Siempre creí que los buenos modales eran buenos modales estuvieras donde estuvieras en el mundo. I always believed that good manners were good manners wherever you were in the world. But that was until I met my boyfriend, Jason, who is from Burma, also known as Myanmar. But that was until I met my boyfriend, Jason, who is from Burma, also known as Myanmar. Pero eso fue hasta que conocí a mi novio, Hasson, que es de Birmania, también conocida como Myanmar. But that was until I met my boyfriend, Jason, who is from Burma, also known as Myanmar. We met in New York when we were both students in college. We met in New York when we were both students in college. Nos conocimos en Nueva York cuando ambos éramos estudiantes universitarios. We met in New York when we were both students in college. When we first got to know each other, we were always surrounded by a group of friends. When we first got to know each other, we were always surrounded by a group of friends. Cuando empezamos a conocernos, siempre estábamos rodeados de un grupo de amigos. When we first got to know each other, we were always surrounded by a group of friends. I liked Jason because he was funny and kind, and I could tell he liked me, but we never spent any time alone. I liked Jason because he was funny and kind, and I could tell he liked me, but we never spent any time alone. Me gustaba Jason porque era divertido y amable, y me daba cuenta de que yo le gustaba a él, pero nunca pasábamos tiempo a solas. I liked Jason because he was funny and kind, and I could tell he liked me, but we never spent any time alone. The first time I suggested that we hang out without our friends, he said no without an explanation. The first time I suggested that we hang out without our friends, he said no without an explanation. La primera vez que le propuse salir sin nuestros amigos, dijo que no sin dar explicaciones. The first time I suggested that we hang out without our friends, he said no without an explanation. Honestly, I thought it was kind of rude. Honestly, I thought it was kind of rude. Sinceramente, me pareció un poco grosero. Honestly, I thought it was kind of rude. And my feelings were really hurt, so I didn't talk to him as much. My feelings were hurt, so I didn't talk to him as much. Hirió mis sentimientos, así que ya no le hablaba tanto. My feelings were hurt, so I didn't talk to him as much. Then the next time I saw Jason in our big group, he was just as friendly and happy as usual. Then the next time I saw Jason in our big group, he was just as friendly and happy as usual. Luego, la siguiente vez que vi a Jason en nuestro gran grupo, estaba tan amable y contento como siempre. Then the next time I saw Jason in our big group, he was just as friendly and happy as usual. I was confused. I was confused. Yo estaba confundida. I was confused. Finally, I asked him why he couldn't hang out with me. Finally, I asked him why he wouldn't hang out with me. Finalmente, le pregunté por qué no salía conmigo. Finally, I asked him why he wouldn't hang out with me. 
he apologized and then he told me that in Burma, it's custom to date in a group situation. He apologized and then he told me that in Burma, it's custom to a date in a group situation. Se disculpó y entonces me dijo que en Birmania es costumbre tener una cita en grupo. He apologized, and then he told me that in Burma, it's custom to a date in a group situation. Since he had only been in the U.S. for a few years, he was still having trouble navigating the two cultures that he lived in. Since he had only been in the U.S. for a few years, he was still having trouble navigating the two cultures he lived in. Como había estado en Estados Unidos solo unos pocos años, todavía tenía problemas para desenvolverse en las dos culturas en las que vivía. Since he had only been in the U.S. for a few years, he was still having trouble navigating the two cultures he lived in. One culture was the more reserved Burmese culture, while the other was the more open American culture. One culture was the more reserved Burmese culture, while the other was the more open American culture. Una era la cultura birmana, más reservada, mientras que la otra era la cultura estadounidense, más abierta. One culture was the more reserved Burmese culture, while the other was the more open American culture. A few months later, after we started dating, I asked him why he never responded to my cute, romantic Facebook posts with more than cool or thanks. A few months later, after we started dating, I asked him why he never responded to my cute, romantic Facebook posts with more than a cool or a thanks. Unos meses después, cuando ya salíamos, le pregunté por qué nunca respondía a mis mensajes bonitos y románticos de Facebook con algo más que genial o oh, gracias. A few months later, after we started dating, I asked him why he never responded to my cute, romantic Facebook posts with more than a cool or a thanks. It seemed weird to me that his responses weren't romantic. It seemed weird to me that his responses weren't romantic. Me parecía raro que sus respuestas no fueran románticas. It seemed weird to me that his responses weren't romantic. And honestly, I was a little jealous of the sweet posts my American friends' boyfriends left on their Facebook pages. And honestly, I was a little jealous of the sweet posts my American friends' boyfriends left on their Facebook pages. Y, sinceramente, estaba un poco celosa de los dulces mensajes que los novios de mis amigas estadounidenses dejaban en sus páginas de Facebook. And honestly, I was a little jealous of the sweet posts my American friends' boyfriends left on their Facebook pages. But Jason told me in Burma, it's considered bragging to express your feelings in public, especially on a social networking site. But Jason told me in Burma, it's considered bragging to express your feelings in public, especially on a social networking site. Pero Jason me dijo que en Birmania se considera una fanfarronada expresar tus sentimientos en público, sobre todo en una red social. But Jason told me in Burma, it's considered bragging to express your feelings in public, especially on a social networking site. He didn't want his family and friends to think he was bragging about his American girlfriend. He didn't want his family and friends to think he was bragging about his American girlfriend. No quería que su familia y sus amigos pensaran que estaba presumiendo de su novia americana. He didn't want his family and friends to think he was bragging about his American girlfriend. From an American point of view, I thought he was being a bit cold. From an American point of view, I thought he was being a bit cold. Desde un punto de vista estadounidense, pensé que estaba siendo un poco frío. 
from an American point of view, I thought he was being a bit cold. However, from a Burmese point of view, he was actually being respectful. However, from a Burmese point of view, he was actually being respectful. Sin embargo, desde el punto de vista birmano, estaba siendo respetuoso. However, from a Burmese point of view, he was actually being respectful. As confused as I was about what's considered good and bad manners in Jason's culture, he felt the same way about American culture. As confused as I was about what's considered good and bad manners in Jason's culture, he felt the same way about American culture. Al igual que yo estaba confundida sobre lo que se considera buena y mala educación en la cultura de Jason, él pensaba lo mismo de la cultura americana. As confused as I was about what's considered good and bad manners in Jason's culture, he felt the same way about American culture. He thought it was bad manners to refer to have a best friend. He thought it was bad manners to refer to have a best friend. Pensaba que era de mala educación decir que uno tiene un mejor amigo. He thought it was bad manners to refer to have a best friend. And he would argue with me whenever I called my friend Rachel my best friend. And he would argue with me whenever I called my friend Rachel my best friend. Y discutía conmigo cuando llamaba a mi amiga Rachel, mi mejor amiga. And he would argue with me whenever I called my friend Rachel, my best friend. Jason said that there is no such thing as a best friend in Burmese culture. Jason said there is no such thing as a best friend in Burmese culture. Jason decía que en la cultura birmana no existen los mejores amigos. Jason said there is no such thing as a best friend in Burmese culture. There are only close friends. There are only close friends. Solo hay amigos íntimos. There are only close friends. It would be inconsiderate to name one person as a best friend because your other friends would feel offended. It would be inconsiderate to name one person as a best friend because your other friends would feel offended. Sería desconsiderado nombrar a una persona como mejor amiga porque tus otros amigos se sentirían ofendidos. It would be inconsiderate to name one person as a best friend because your other friends would feel offended. Anyways, we've been together for two years and we still have disagreements. Anyway, we've been together for two years, and we still have disagreements. De todas formas, llevamos dos años juntos y seguimos teniendo desacuerdos. Anyway, we've been together for two years, and we still have disagreements. But we've learned that as long as we're a couple, we'll never completely agree about whether our manners are good or bad. But we've learned that as long as we're a couple, we'll never completely agree about whether our manners are good or bad. Pero hemos aprendido que mientras seamos pareja, nunca estaremos completamente de acuerdo sobre si nuestros modales son buenos o malos. But, we've learned that as long as we're a couple, we'll never completely agree about whether our manners are good or bad. I always believed that good manners were good manners wherever you were in the world. But that was until I met my boyfriend, Jason, who is from Burma, also known as Myanmar. We met in New York when we were both students in college. When we first got to know each other, we were always surrounded by a group of friends. 
I liked Jason because he was funny and kind and I could tell he liked me, but we never spent any time alone. The first time I suggested that we hang out without our friends, he said no without an explanation. Honestly, I thought it was kind of rude and my feelings were really hurt, so I didn't talk to him as much. Then the next time I saw Jason in our big group, he was just as friendly and happy as usual. I was confused. Finally, I asked him why he couldn't hang out with me. He apologized and then he told me that in Burma, it's custom to date in a group situation. Since he had only been in the U.S. for a few years, he was still having trouble navigating the two cultures that he lived in. One culture was the more reserved Burmese culture, while the other was the more open American culture. A few months later, after we started dating, I asked him why he never responded to my cute, romantic Facebook posts with more than cool or thanks. It seemed weird to me that his responses weren't romantic. And honestly, I was a little jealous of the sweet posts my American friends' boyfriends left on their Facebook pages. But Jason told me in Burma, it's considered bragging to express your feelings in public, especially on a social networking site. He didn't want his family and friends to think he was bragging about his American girlfriend. From an American point of view, I thought he was being a bit cold. However, from a Burmese point of view, he was actually being respectful. As confused as I was about what's considered good and bad manners in Jason's culture, he felt the same way about American culture. He thought it was bad manners to refer to have a best friend, and he would argue with me whenever I called my friend Rachel my best friend. Jason said that there is no such thing as a best friend in Burmese culture. There are only close friends. It would be inconsiderate to name one person as a best friend because your other friends would feel offended. Anyways, we've been together for two years and we still have disagreements, but we've learned that as long as we're a couple, we'll never completely agree about whether our manners are good or bad. Mood food. According to Dr. Paul Clayton, a food expert, what we eat and drink can affect our brain just like the rest of our body. Some foods have substances that influence how we think and feel. For example, eating foods high in carbohydrates can make us feel relaxed and happy. People on diets may feel a little down after a couple of weeks because they eat fewer carbohydrates. On the other hand, foods rich in protein can make us feel awake and focused. Research shows that school children who have a high protein breakfast tend to do better in school compared to those with a lower protein breakfast. Eating the right kind of lunch can also make a difference if you have an important exam or a meeting where you need to make quick decisions. In an experiment for a TV show, two chess players, both former champions, had different meals before playing each other. One had a meal with protein and the other had a meal with carbohydrates. The player who ate the protein-rich meal performed better and made quicker decisions, while the other player felt sleepy and took longer to decide. This experiment was repeated with the same results. Another interesting finding is that certain foods like dark chocolate can help reduce stress. Swiss researchers found that eating one dark chocolate candy bar had positive effects on highly stressed people. It not only reduced stress, but also improved mood and lowered high blood pressure. Why does chocolate have these effects? 
First, it reduces the level of the stress hormone cortisol. Second, it reduces the fight or flight hormone, a hormone that makes people want to start a fight or run away when they are very stressed. In addition, chocolate contains other compounds that lower blood pressure and improve your mood. These three things, along with its delicious taste, make chocolate a powerful mood changer. According to Dr. Paul Clayton, a food expert, what we eat and drink can affect our brain just like the rest of our body. Some foods have substances that influence how we think and feel. For example, eating foods high in carbohydrates can make us feel relaxed and happy. People on diets may feel a little down after a couple of weeks because they eat fewer carbohydrates. On the other hand, foods rich in protein can make us feel awake and focused. Research shows that school children who have a high protein breakfast tend to do better in school compared to those with a lower protein breakfast. Eating the right kind of lunch can also make a difference if you have an important exam or a meeting where you need to make quick decisions. In an experiment for a TV show, two chess players, both former champions, had different meals before playing each other. One had a meal with protein and the other had a meal with carbohydrates. The player who ate the protein-rich meal performed better and made quicker decisions, while the other player felt sleepy and took longer to decide. This experiment was repeated with the same results. Another interesting finding is that certain foods like dark chocolate can help reduce stress. Swiss researchers found that eating one dark chocolate candy bar had positive effects on highly stressed people. It not only reduced stress, but also improved mood and lowered high blood pressure. Why does chocolate have these effects? First, it reduces the level of the stress hormone cortisol. Second, it reduces the fight or flight hormone, a hormone that makes people want to start a fight or run away when they are very stressed. In addition, chocolate contains other compounds that lower blood pressure and improve your mood. These three things, along with its delicious taste, make chocolate a powerful mood changer. According to Dr. Paul Clayton, a food expert, what we eat and drink can affect our brain just like the rest of our body. According to Dr. Paul Clayton, a food expert, what we eat and drink can affect our brain just like the rest of our body. Según el Dr. Paul Clayton, experto en alimentación, lo que comemos y bebemos puede afectar a nuestro cerebro igual que al resto de nuestro cuerpo. According to Dr. Paul Clayton, a food expert, what we eat and drink can affect our brain just like the rest of our body. Some foods have substances that influence how we think and feel. Some foods have substances that influence how we think and feel. Algunos alimentos tienen sustancias que influyen en cómo pensamos y sentimos. Some foods have substances that influence how we think and feel. For example, eating foods high in carbohydrates can make us feel relaxed and happy. For example, eating foods high in carbohydrates can make us feel relaxed and happy. Por ejemplo, Comer alimentos ricos en hidratos de carbono puede hacernos sentir relajados y felices. For example, eating foods high in carbohydrates can make us feel relaxed and happy. People on diets may feel a little down after a couple of weeks because they eat fewer carbohydrates. People on diets may feel a little down after a couple of weeks because they eat fewer carbohydrates. Las personas a dieta pueden sentirse un poco decaídas al cabo de un par de semanas porque comen menos hidratos de carbono. 
People on diets may feel a little down after a couple of weeks because they eat fewer carbohydrates. On the other hand, foods rich in protein can make us feel awake and focused. On the other hand, foods rich in protein can make us feel awake and focused. Por otro lado, los alimentos ricos en proteínas pueden hacernos sentir despiertos y concentrados. On the other hand, foods rich in protein can make us feel awake and focused. Research shows that school children who have a high protein breakfast tend to do better in school compared to those with a lower protein breakfast. Research shows that school children who have a high protein breakfast tend to do better in school compared to those with a lower protein breakfast. Las investigaciones demuestran que los niños en edad escolar que toman un desayuno rico en proteínas tienden a rendir mejor en la escuela en comparación con aquellos que toman un desayuno con menos proteínas. Research shows that school children who have a high protein breakfast tend to do better in school compared to those with a lower protein breakfast. Eating the right kind of lunch can also make a difference if you have an important exam or a meeting where you need to make quick decisions. Eating the right kind of lunch can also make a difference if you have an important exam or a meeting where you need to make quick decisions. Tomar el almuerzo adecuado también puede marcar la diferencia si tienes un examen importante o una reunión en la que necesitas tomar decisiones rápidas. Eating the right kind of lunch can also make a difference if you have an important exam or a meeting where you need to make quick decisions. In an experiment for a TV show, two chess players, both former champions, had different meals before playing each other. In an experiment for a TV show, two chess players, both former champions, had different meals before playing each other. En un experimento para un programa de televisión, dos ajedrecistas, ambos ex campeones, tomaron comidas diferentes antes de jugar entre sí. In an experiment for a TV show, two chess players, both former champions, had different meals before playing each other. One had a meal with protein and the other had a meal with carbohydrates. One had a meal with protein and the other had a meal with carbohydrates. Uno tuvo una comida con proteínas y el otro una comida con carbohidratos. One had a meal with protein and the other had a meal with carbohydrates. The player who ate the protein-rich meal performed better and made quicker decisions, while the other player felt sleepy and took longer to decide. The player who ate the protein-rich meal performed better and made quicker decisions, while the other player felt sleepy and took longer to decide. El jugador que tomó la comida rica en proteínas rendía mejor y tomaba decisiones más rápidas, mientras que el otro jugador se sentía somnoliento y tardaba más en tomar decisiones. The player who ate the protein-rich meal performed better and made quicker decisions while the other player felt sleepy and took longer to decide. This experiment was repeated with the same results. This experiment was repeated with the same results. Este experimento se repitió con los mismos resultados. This experiment was repeated with the same results. Another interesting finding is that certain foods like dark chocolate can help reduce stress. Another interesting finding is that certain foods like dark chocolate can help reduce stress. Otro hallazgo interesante es que ciertos alimentos, como el chocolate negro, pueden ayudar a reducir el estrés. Another interesting finding is that certain foods like dark chocolate can help reduce stress. Swiss researchers found that eating one dark chocolate candy bar had positive effects on highly stressed people. 
Swiss researchers found that eating one dark chocolate candy bar had positive effects on highly stressed people. Investigadores suizos descubrieron que comer una chocolatina de chocolate negro tenía efectos positivos en personas muy estresadas. Swiss researchers found that eating one dark chocolate candy bar had positive effects on highly stressed people. It not only reduced stress, but also improved mood and lowered high blood pressure. It not only reduced stress, but also improved mood and lowered high blood pressure. No solo reducía el estrés, sino que también mejoraba el estado de ánimo y disminuía la tensión arterial alta. It not only reduced stress, but also improved mood and lowered high blood pressure. Why does chocolate have these effects? Why does chocolate have these effects? ¿Por qué tiene estos efectos el chocolate? Why does chocolate have these effects? First, it reduces the level of the stress hormone cortisol. First, it reduces the level of the stress hormone cortisol. En primer lugar, reduce el nivel de cortisol, la hormona del estrés. First, it reduces the level of the stress hormone cortisol. Second, it reduces the fight or flight hormone, a hormone that makes people want to start a fight or run away when they are very stressed. Second, it reduces the fight or flight hormone, a hormone that makes people want to start a fight or run away when they are very stressed. En segundo lugar, reduce la hormona de lucha o huida, una hormona que hace que la gente quiera iniciar una pelea o huir cuando está muy estresada. Second, it reduces the fight or flight hormone, a hormone that makes people want to start a fight or run away when they are very stressed. In addition, chocolate contains other compounds that lower blood pressure and improve your mood. In addition, chocolate contains other compounds that lower blood pressure and improve your mood. Además, el chocolate contiene otros componentes que reducen la tensión arterial y mejoran el estado de ánimo. In addition, chocolate contains other compounds that lower blood pressure and improve your mood. These three things, along with its delicious taste, make chocolate a powerful mood changer. These three things, along with its delicious taste, make chocolate a powerful mood changer. Estas tres cosas, junto con su delicioso sabor, Hacen del chocolate un potente aliado para cambiar el estado de ánimo. These three things, along with its delicious taste, make chocolate a powerful mood changer. According to Dr. Paul Clayton, a food expert, what we eat and drink can affect our brain just like the rest of our body. Some foods have substances that influence how we think and feel. For example, eating foods high in carbohydrates can make us feel relaxed and happy. People on diets may feel a little down after a couple of weeks because they eat fewer carbohydrates. On the other hand, foods rich in protein can make us feel awake and focused. Research shows that school children who have a high protein breakfast tend to do better in school compared to those with a lower protein breakfast. Eating the right kind of lunch can also make a difference if you have an important exam or a meeting where you need to make quick decisions. In an experiment for a TV show, two chess players, both former champions, had different meals before playing each other. One had a meal with protein and the other had a meal with carbohydrates. The player who ate the protein-rich meal performed better and made quicker decisions, while the other player felt sleepy and took longer to decide. This experiment was repeated with the same results. 
Another interesting finding is that certain foods like dark chocolate can help reduce stress. Swiss researchers found that eating one dark chocolate candy bar had positive effects on highly stressed people. It not only reduced stress, but also improved mood and lowered high blood pressure. Why does chocolate have these effects? First, it reduces the level of the stress hormone cortisol. Second, it reduces the fight or flight hormone, a hormone that makes people want to start a fight or run away when they are very stressed. In addition, chocolate contains other compounds that lower blood pressure and improve your mood. These three things, along with its delicious taste, make chocolate a powerful mood changer. Mm -hmm.